Imagine this, you are a UFC fighter at the highest level. Would you think about planning a bank heist to pull off millions of dollars? Probably not, right? Meet Lee Murray, the former UFC fighter who did this. He was a fighter who once had immense potential but ended up losing everything. From a humble background to riches, from involvement in drug dealing to pursuing a career in professional fighting, and from being a professional fighter to resorting to armed robbery, he dug his own grave. But the story goes far beyond that. Stick on, because this is the story of the UFC fighter who became infamous for orchestrating a daring bank heist, Lee Murray, originally known as Lee Prahim. Murray Lamrani earned the nickname Lightning for his powerful punches and tough chin. Born on November 12, 1977, to an English mother and Moroccan father, Lee Murray competed in the UFC before a shocking incident that cut short his MMA career. Despite this setback, he was once considered one of the top MMA fighters in the United Kingdom. While Murray's fighting career was impressive, he gained international attention for his involvement in the infamous Securitas Depot robbery, one of the largest bank heists in history. How did a man with so much potential end up like this? Murray had a history of street fights and criminal activities from a young age, including drug dealing and pub brawls. However, he eventually redirected his talents towards sports, aiming to become a professional athlete. But that's not all. Even Lee's upbringing was just extremely sad. He went to Foxfield Primary School in Plumstead, but his childhood wasn't easy. His dad struggled with alcohol and often became violent. One day, Lee had to defend himself from his father's abusive episodes and ended up knocking his dad out with a single punch. It was a turning point for him, but the struggle didn't end there. The tension at home grew so intense that his dad eventually left, leaving Lee's mom to raise him and his sister alone. It's a story many can relate to, the challenges of family and finding your way despite the odds. Even his school days were a struggle. He got kicked out of Eaglesfield Boys School because he clashed with teachers. But that didn't stop him. He ended up at Woolwich Polytechnic School, where he found himself drawn to stories of American mobsters like John Gotti. But Lee's path took a darker turn when he fell in with a gang called the Barney Boys, where he got involved in theft and drug dealing. It was during this time that he met Mark Epstein, another guy caught up in the same lifestyle, who later found his own path in mixed martial arts. Lee's reputation for violence grew as he got into more street fights, you could say he had a knack for it, like the time he took on nine bouncers at a local disco and came out on top. Despite running into trouble with the law for drugs, Lee didn't let it slow him down. After a stint in Feltham Young Offenders Institution, he focused on getting in shape. However, after the birth of his daughter, he decided to turn his life around for good. In 1998, he became a dad to Lily Jane, his daughter with his girlfriend Siobhan Rollings. While many of his buddies ended up behind bars, Lee somehow managed to steer clear of trouble. He even tied the knot with Siobhan in 2000, making a real effort to turn his life around. He threw himself into training at London Shoot Fighters, where his commitment caught the eye of the owner, Alexis Dimitriets. Despite the scars and calluses on his hands from his rough past, Lee was determined to succeed. Success had finally decided to accompany him. His first fight at Millennium Brawl in December 1999 was a knockout success, earning him the nickname Lightning Lee Murray. Buoyed by this victory, he doubled down on his training, hungry for more success. But his journey was far from smooth sailing. There were plenty of obstacles along the way. In 2000, Lee organized some fights, and his first one was against Mike Tomlinson on March 12th. But the night before the match, Lee went to a local pub to watch a fight between Prince Nassim and Voyani Bungu. Things got messy when a guy accused Lee of taking his seat and ended up getting knocked out. Another person who tried to step in also got a taste of Lee's fists. Even the bartender got knocked out cold after Lee hit him with knee strikes to the head. The next day, Lee found his left hand injured, but he still managed to win the fight using only his right hand. Lee also won his second fight against Chris Albandia. Murray's following fight took place just weeks later on July 9th against Danny Rushton, known for his toughness from competing in no-holds-barred contests in Russia. However, the match ended as a no-contest when Rushton collapsed from exhaustion in the first round. Lee's reputation in the fighting scene kept growing, and he started attending bigger events. His career had finally lifted off. In July 2002, Murray received an unexpected invitation to the after-party of UFC 38, even though he hadn't competed in the event. 
As he walked in, a friend of Tito Ortiz, the reigning UFC light heavyweight champion at the time, playfully pretended to put Pat Miladich, the event's organizer, in a headlock. Tony Franklin, a profiter at the party, misinterpreted the situation and thought Miladich was being attacked. Chaos ensued as men spilled into a nearby alley, fists flying in the scuffle. Amidst the commotion, Murray found himself facing off against Ortiz. Recalling the incident, Miladich described the scene, I turned around, and there's Tito coming straight for me, ready to take on Lee Murray. Lee's backing up the alley, taking off his jacket. Tito throws a punch but misses, and at that moment, Lee Murray hits Ortiz with a deadly five-punch combo. Murray claims he knocked out Ortiz with a five-punch combo and a kick to the head using steel-toe boots while Ortiz was down. However, Ortiz denies being knocked out. In 2004, Murray built an impressive 8-2 record in smaller fights before finally landing a contact with the UFC on January 31, 2004 at the Mandalay Bay Events Center in Las Vegas. Known for his intimidating presence, Murray made a memorable entrance to his UFC debut, wearing a prison jumpsuit and a Hannibal Lecter mask. He went on to defeat Rivera in the first round with a triangle choke armbar submission. Unfortunately, this marked Murray's sole fight in the UFC. Despite the organization's interest in signing him for a bout against Patrick Coate at UFC 52 in April 2005, Murray's visa issues and legal troubles forced him to return to England to address a road rage incident. During the altercation, Murray left a man in a six-day coma, leading to the cancellation of his UFC contract. Subsequently, Murray signed with Cage Rage, but his stint there was short-lived as well. But a life-changing moment happened to Murray in 2005. On September 28, 2005, Back in the UK, Murray got into another bar fight during the birthday party of British glamour model Lauren Pope. He was stabbed multiple times, resulting in a punctured lung and a severed artery. Looking back on the incident, Lee later said, Aiki, I got stabbed in the head first. I thought it was a punch. Then I felt the blood coming down my face. He also added, I just wiped the blood and just continued to fight. Next, I looked down at my chest and blood was literally shooting out of my chest. I looked down and I knew I had been stabbed in the heart by the way the flow of blood was coming out of my chest. It was literally flying out of my chest like a yard in front of me. Murray ended up staggering down the street until two women spotted him and called for an ambulance. At the hospital, doctors had to revive Murray four times during surgery, with one instance where he was clinically dead for three minutes. He was losing so much blood that nurses had to keep bringing in bags of blood from the blood bank to keep him alive. Although Murray managed to pull through, the attack marked the end of his UFC career. Then came February 21, 2006, a day that changed everything. Colin Dixon was driving home when he got pulled over by two fake cops. They handcuffed him, gagged him, and took him to a remote farm. Meanwhile, they went to his house and tricked his wife into thinking there had been an accident. They kidnapped her, too, and brought her to where Colin was being held. They threatened Colin, saying they'd hurt his family if he didn't help them rob his workplace, the Securitas Depot. The next night, they all went to the depot. Colin managed to signal a co-worker who let them in. The robbers stormed in, heavily armed, and tied up the staff. Colin had to disable the alarm, and then they loaded up millions of pounds in banknotes onto their getaway trucks. They stole over 53 million pounds in cash, leaving even more behind because they couldn't take it all. The staff managed to free themselves and triggered an alarm once the robbers were gone. The police found evidence, including Murray's crashed Ferrari and his cell phones with incriminating messages, along with stolen money and weapons linked to the robbery. The men later found guilty of conspiracy included Paul Allen, Jetmir Butch Papa or Papa, Roger Coots, Emir Heisenaj, Lee Murray, Stuart Royal, and Leah Russia. The aftermath was intense. Armed police officers raided the homes of Papa and Lee Russia on Saturday, February 25, 2006. They found surveillance footage of Dixon's house at Lee's place. Papa and Lee Russia were arrested in Deptford, London, on Monday. A search at Elder and Far uncovered £30,000 in stolen banknotes in a car trunk and an additional £105,600 hidden under a tree. Lee's life took another turn in June 2009. He was in prison and he lost a lot of weight. 
He got in trouble for having a laptop with internet access and five kilograms of cocaine. Other inmates weren't too happy about it, and one of them reported Lee to the guards. Prison officials suspected Lee was planning to escape and his weight loss didn't help matters. In June 2010, Lee faced prosecution in a Moroccan court for his role in the robbery. He got sentenced to 10 years initially, but that was later extended to 25 years when his appeal failed. It's been a wild ride for Lee, and it's not over yet. Despite everything, he still hopes to return to fighting someday. But for now, he's serving his time at solid prison in Morocco, reflecting on his past and the choices that led him here. If you want to see more videos like the crazy story of UFC fighter Lee Murray, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Until next time!